Hello everyone. Thank you for giving comments on the videos of the gynecology and obstetrics series and uh, thank you for all the undergraduates and postgraduates who are watching this series. I am starting with the operative techniques and the first what I am covering is the abdominal hysterectomy. Main things for all UG students will be covered and the detailed things for the PG students will, all be will also be covered. So first of all we will have a look on the instruments which are used in abdominal hysterectomy and in the next lecture we will be talking about the steps and intricacies of abdominal hysterectomy. What is the meaning of hysterectomy? Hystera means uterus and ectomy means removal. So removal of the uterus from the abdominal root that means some incision is there on the abdomen of the patient and from that incision we are removing the uterus. Now what are the types and all we will be discussing later but in the cases of abdominal hysterectomy you will be finding some instruments. These instruments are useful for the undergraduate students for their table in the gynae viva. If you are not able to recognize the instrument then the whole viva is in soup. So first of all this is Rampley's sponge holding forceps. Important things see there is a loop over here there is a place where you can actually hold the sponge and it is atraumatic also it is a long instrument with three catches over here every surgical instrument has got three catches here whenever you close the instrument there are three sounds of clicks click 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 first one is clamp just to hold second is close and third one is crush so if while holding a tissue what is important is how are you handling your instrument you put your thumb and your ring finger inside both of these handles and you support the length of the instrument with the help of your index finger and your middle finger right to guide the instrument the power should not be more the skill should be more and how many catches catch clamp crush catch clamp crush so if you are just holding it with catch single click that means you are just holding you are not destroying the tissue second one is clamp that is you are clamping it you are obliterating the vessels or the things which are passing through it and crush means you are totally killing the tissue which is inside the fenestrations or the tip of your uh, this instrument so catch clamp crush right so this is Rampley's sponge holding forceps loop shaped and serrated jaws what does that mean this is a loop and inside the jaws you will find serrations like this so that you have a better grip of the sponge and atraumatic if you are holding even a tissue with this forceps it will not traumatize the tissue this way you will recognize this instrument see fenestrations inside right and three catches now after painting and draping because in the uh, in our procedure that Rampley sponge holding forceps is used for painting and draping next putting an incision for putting an incision there is a knife handle and there are blades of different numbers used for different procedures so this is Bard Parker knife handle this is a knife handle where you hold the knife handle from this area and a surgical blade is placed here surgical blades are having grooves inside which are fitted in this tip so different number of knife holders and different numbers of your blades so reusable flat handle combined with surgical blades of different numbers so even if you say only Bard Parker knife handle that is okay and then your viva goes on to the surgery see this is the handle this is the groove where your surgical blade you can fix it easily this is autoclavable so once a surgery is done you actually discard the surgical blade which we use and we autoclave this and reuse it in the next surgery now forceps these are forceps right plain forcep tooth forcep what do we mean by tooth this thing these jaws which are there on the tip and there are numerous sizes of forceps so this is a forceps of Ellis forceps size 15 inches 
the main purpose of a forceps is tissue holding. What does that mean? If you are suturing something, you are looking at something, how to pick that uh, tissue up? So, forceps is used for that. A plain forceps, plain forceps and tooth forceps. Plain forceps, as the name suggests, there is no tooth. So, it is for soft holding. That means there is some flimsy tissue or there is some tissue which can be traumatized if you catch it between pointed tips. So for soft holding and a traumatic purpose, we use plain forceps and cauterization. What do we mean by cauterization? We are using this electrocauteries in our surgeries to coagulate the vessels. So if you find some bleeding vessel somewhere and you can hold it with a plain forceps and then cauterize it to occlude the lumen of that vessel. Tooth forceps to hold tough structures. Why tough structures? Because it is tooth, it can traumatize. But because it is a tough structure, it will not get traumatized. And the point of giving a tooth is that it will prevent slippage of the tissue. Because if we talk about tough structures, tough structures are generally your aponeurosis, rectus sheath, thick muscles of the uterus. So if you hold them with plain forceps, they are bound to slip from it. If you hold from tooth forceps, you have a better grip, right? So when we are reading an in instrument, what is important is you should know how to recognize it on the table, how to hold it, how to use it and at what steps of which surgeries they are used. If you know all these things, then your viva is through. So this is your plain forceps and this is your tooth forceps. Right? So, tooth is seen very clearly in this video. Next, we will be talking about clamps and forceps. I have kept these five instruments in a row. Why these five instruments in a row? Because they look alike. On a table, when you are anxious, they all look alike and you should know how to differentiate between them. Some of them are called as forceps, some of them are, used, are called as clamps and they are the essence of the surgery. Almost same length, almost similar structure, almost similar joints in between, right? But what I want to tell is that this is your Ellis forceps, first one, right? thick broad jaws. This is your hemostatic or artery forceps. Look at the tip. The tip is pointed. This is your cocker's clamp which is used in hysterectomy. Look at the tip. It is a bit broad as compared to the artery with a tooth at the tip. This is your needle holder. Small tip. And when you will open it, you will see different serrations and groove to hold the needle. And of course, this is your towel clip. The structure is altogether different. It opens and holds the linen at place. So these five clamps and forceps in a row. First one is your Ellis forceps. Ellis forceps is having sharp rat-like teeth. If you will look at this point, it has sharp rat-like teeth. And it grasps the tough tissue like fascia and sheath. You cannot hold small things and flimsy things and delicate things from a helis forceps. It is just like a tooth forceps because it is having teeth at the end. So to hold tough structures like rectus sheath, you are suturing, you are holding. For holding uterine muscles, you are holding with ellis and you are suturing it. Now comes the hemostatic artery forceps. Artery forceps is a misnomer, but generally in operation theatres it is called as artery forceps. The main name is the hemostatic forceps. Hemostat itself means to occlude a bleeding blood vessel. So it has a very pointed tip, pin point. It comes in various sizes. I have kept a big one. Small one are called as mosquito artery forceps. They are very small. So for small bleeding points, you can actually locate the small bleeding points and hold with the tip of an artery, it will occlude the vessel and sometimes pressure only stops the bleeding. It has serrated tips 
and they are snugly fitting with each other so that they can occlude. What do we mean by serrations? That if you will open the jaws, you will find serrations. Now, they are both straight and curved. Like this one is curved, the tip is curved. But sometimes they are straight also. According like where you are operating, if you are operating in depth, how much length you want, how much curve you want, accordingly you use these forceps. Mainly used to control the bleeding by completely occluding the blood vessels since they crush. So they completely occlude and there is a high in level of pressure that is exerted on that blood vessel. Now again, now we are at the caucus clamp. It has got multiple transverse serrations on both the blades with one tooth at the end. If you remember the tooth, then you can easily recognize the caucus clamp by just opening it and looking at the tooth at the end. It prevents the slippage of the ligaments. The three main clamps of any hysterectomy like the cornwall, the first one, if you are clamping the infundibulopelvic ligament or the uterosacral ligament, you don't want your clamp, your uh, tissue inside the clamp to, uh, take, to slip out. How will you suture it? So it prevents slippage mainly. It clamps and holds tough structures like ligaments. So if you identify this tooth, then you can identify the caucus clamp. Now this one is the needle holder. It has got short jaws, only this much, right? Because we have got a long handle so that a simple of the force can give that rotating movement. Short jaws, crisscross lines and sometimes a groove is there. Two types you will find. Sometimes there are only crisscross serrations in the jaw. Sometimes you will find a groove also which will accommodate the curve of the needle. As compared to the artery forceps which has long jaws. Generally you will find long jaws in artery forceps but the needle holder has short jaws. See, this way you can differentiate between the two instruments. Mayo's towel clip, last one. It has got very strong grip over here. It is a versatile instrument. You can hold things together, drapes together, tubings together. Used to secure surgical drapes or towels without damaging them. So every instrument has got a typical use. This is your towel clip, opening of a towel clip and closing it. Now see the tip of the needle holder. We will open it. You can see the crisscross serrations, like very beautifully seen the crisscross serrations. Now comes your caucus clamp, long blades, serrated blades with tooth at the end of the blades, right? This is the artery forceps, long serrated jaws, but no tooth at the end. Ellis forceps, when we open the jaws, we will find rat-like teeth, right? It is broad at the end with rat-like teeth inside. Now come scissors. There are three types of scissors. Generally, you will find on the trolley of operation theater of a gynae OT. First one is thread cutting scissors. Second one is this one, medicine bomb fine scissors. And third one is Mayo's tissue cutting scissors. Now you can see the thread cutting scissors. It is sharp in the whole length with the tip also, but blunt here, rounded, so that it does not actually injure any tissue if at all it is coming there in the field. And it is used to cut surgical sutures. That's why it is called as thread cutting. So whenever you are taking a knot, you are tying something and your assistant will cut the thread. So this is a thread cutting scissors for fast and accurate cutting. This is Medzenbaum fine scissors. How do you differentiate between them? Almost the same length, but look at the tip. The tip is very fine and precise and pointed over here. And it is thick and tough, the Mayo scissor. Whenever you take it in hand, you find it is grossly thick and it is very thin. 
it is cutting thin and soft tissue whenever you are doing fine dissection at places wherever you are having vital structures like you want to separate the urinary bladder from when you are separating the uterovesical fold of peritoneum so you don't want to injure the bladder and cut small small fibers at a time whenever there are dense adhesions if there is a case of endometriosis intestines are adherent you don't want to injure them you go sharply in a plane of dissection and cut small small at a time so at that time fine dissection is required for fine and soft dissection medzenbaum fine scissors are used but Mayo's tissue cutting scissors is having thick blades and for dense tissues like you are opening the abdomen you want to cut the rectus sheath or you have clamped structures like thick ligaments and now you want to cut them then at that point mayo scissors is of help see this was your mayo scissors it was so thick medzenbaum scissors fine cutting scissors fine tips and this is your thread cutting scissors right and now retractors what do you mean by retraction retraction means to pull apart things so that you can have a clear vision of your operating field two types of retractors are generally used in abdominal hysterectomies first one is a malleable retractor as the name suggests malleable you can change the shape accordingly most of the times it is made up of copper but other materials are also used so it fits the form of the area what does that mean you can totally bend it this way other way round so if you want to push the intestines back and pack them behind just fold it and put it inside the abdomen since it is malleable it is soft it will not cause any damage to the adjacent structures but you can easily accommodate it in spaces generally it is used to retract the intestines now this is the devers retractor this is a question mark shaped retractor and this is this comes in all sizes thin thick small broad it is generally curved because of the according to the build of the patient this curve actually fills the curvature of the abdominal cavity so you can put it inside and retract the abdominal wall so that you can have a good vision of your operative field so it fits the curvature of the abdominal wall this is the handle from where you will hold the retractor see this is your devers retractor curved at the tip which fits the abdominal cavity and this is the handle this is malleable retractor you can fold it easily in any shape that you want and all of them are autoclavable so with this i finish off with the lecture of the instruments used in abdominal hysterectomy and i hope you find it useful thank you so much